All right. <coughs> uh, mm, let me just get things right here. Uh, all right. Let's. I gotta teleport back there. Uh. Let's get those. Let's get that quest out of the way first, then I'll continue exploring. There may be another quest on the other area. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, first one, the three day. This doesn't point me to anything, right? Yeah, this is for completing the others. Very well. Mm, if I had to fight some things, I'll probably me. die a bit. My wanderer <sighs> Too slow. is not at a decent level either. A not really well equipped with artifacts oh it didn't even come on most important things first mm, kinda suits him too bright mm, I like it because this one won't suit him anymore with these colors. Ah, kinda match the hat. Hmm. Yeah, I think this gives a nice contrast with his suit and match the hat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, staff equipment in position, mechanisms are prepped and ready. This performance of the Black Naker and, all, and the All Devour, Devouring Kraken, uh, play from Dias 3 Day Reverie, will now begin. Docked in the port, closest to the rumored location of the treasure, the crew of the pirate ship Black Naker is recruiting new sailors and restocking before the final and most crucial leg of the voyage. Experienced adventurers set foot on the deck of the Black Naker and there are outstanding fighters, but not sailors. Ahoy there, lane lovers. Uh, get on over here. Uh, the voice from the speaker changed. It sounds like someone really serious calling us. So it's strange to interact with us. Who else would I be talking to? You are the best out of this sorry bunch of scallywags. I, we can't set sail without you. I'm the chief mate of the Black Naker. You'll be working with me on this voyage. Savvy? Perk up sailors. Uh, it's your first day on deck. And our quartermaster will make sure you get the best preserved meat, cream, hard tack, and dandelion wine. The spirit continues to narrate the scene for you. The shipmate appears to greet the raw recruits, dressed in ragged clothes and swaddled bandages. They... Why? It could... I would prefer if it was just somebody on the... the... Uh... What's the name of that thing? Just somebody talking to me through the speaker and then... Describing that somebody that I won't see came by. It is obvious that he has just arrived in the first fight. Looking around, you see most of the sailors are seriously wounded. However, they are in high spirits, showing no signs of fear or being discouraged. The sailors get around you, applauding the newcomers and offering welcome gifts and food. Oh, so the speaker also provides detailed narration of the scene. Uh... Okay, like the scene just now, we were just welcomed on board the Black Naker. So, shall we play along? Uh, thank you, thank you everyone. We haven't had the preserved meat or hardtack here yet, but they must be tasty. 
It's a pity that we can't see the actors or props. Okay. Otherwise, this could be quite immersive. Yeah, the attraction is called uh, Three Day Reverie. So, are we just supposed to rely on our own powers of daydreaming? So, it probably does save a lot of own costs. Building a real part ship, actually being able to sail anywhere at a moment's notice. That must be expensive. Isn't everything here magical? I don't think it's cost anything. Just some time. Wrong idea. But still, only having a narrator it is too far. Uh, we can only imagine so much. Guess we'll have to try. By my mid, that's how it's gonna be. Alright, Paimon will give it a try. As the noise dies down, a powerful looking man appears on the bridge. He's dressed just like common sailors, save for the ragged tricorn on his head. His left hand is missing, replaced by a rusty hook. Attention on deck, Captain Wills arrived. The time is now, my, my heart is. Get to your positions, double check your weapons and your supplies, be prepared uh, and prepare the ship. Get ready to wait anchor. Well, the captain is here, he sounds so calm and reliable. The treasure isn't far now, lads. The final leg of the voyage is by far the most important. Our wounded comrades, drowned supplies, uh, lost dusk birds, and even the casks of run that we scrimped and saved for, the price we pay will not have been in vain. As long as we find the legendary treasure, we can appease the Kraken before the deadline. The Kraken was treasure. Never again must we seek dishonest merchants to plunder for pocket change. So give it your all, your scurvy sea dogs. Do it so our town may know peace, and our friends and family need no longer fear tyranny and toil. Full speed ahead. Treasure, treasure, full speed ahead for peace. Having welcomed powerful new recruits aboard, the Black Naker prepares to wait anchor and set sail for the treasure. Ooh, the speaker really sets the scene. The goal of this part is really different from what Paimon imagined. But I'm almost curious what happens next. The speaker said we can ride the choo choo car to continue the play. Paimon likes the space. Anchor awaits, Ignus. So I'll just be going from one place to the other, reading a bunch of text. Why is this one so slow? Oh, there are special effects. As they saw the treasure, the back naked rushed into dangerous waters. Thick fog filled the air and rolling waves hit the hull relentlessly, causing ships to shake violently. Terrifying lightning struck frequently, barely missing the, uh, the lookout of the ship. The mast could see nothing from the cross nest. Even the compass failed. Perhaps they were hearing things, but the crew felt they could hear. And the ship's cart shaking too much. It feels like it's a sailing on the ship. Time was getting dizzy. I don't like text like that. At this crucial juncture, the captain took over the duties of the housemaid, almost as if stepped into rogue ship. Don't panic, lads. Our intuition and the blessings of our folks back home will guide us. Uh, well, by so many shipwrecks around us, feels like we've got to be vigilant. This earth who failed at the treasure and sea monster. Oh, we're supposed to shoot it. Enemy attack, enemy attack, sea monster. Minions are attacking. Aren't those part of the Kraken? Those look like Kraken tentacles with hooks and... Hooks and hats. But isn't the Kraken our... Uh, enter. That's too slow.
The jungle horns are false lies. Vanquish, that was not time to choose the best. No one thinks you even ahead. want this. Uh, where am I on the map? Okay, this a chest I could find before. Yeah, we could just have a bunch of pylons around as crewmates and captain and stuff. However, beautiful in chain is uh, saying you travel across the distance of the team. That the sound does right. I can see the food my grandma makes. It smells so good. Are those sirens? Uh, you want to be witches with a siren song? Uh, that's tricks you old. Let's plug your ears with white masutake. <laughs> what masutake? We don't have any. Can we just use our hands? Watch out, we're heading for a cliff. Brace for impact. On guard, me heart is grab on something so you don't get it. Wait a minute, you are the cliffs in your ocean. The treasure is hidden in a dangerous spot. Well, there are cliffs on the ocean around here. And another cliff, mountain brace positions where the hydro. Uh, hypostasis is instead of survive the impact or something, it doesn't matter. Ah, okay, this area was closed. After many twists and turns, the Black Naker finally reached the pass where the treasure was hidden. Okay, ah, I found myself on the map. Ah, it's over here. Quit following me. What? Search forth. Mind the side effects. Yeah, this party probably sucks a lot right now. Unnecessary. Huh. Uh, is the screen projector over there? Should be able to pass fuse it. We weren't supposed to choose that yet. Huh. Too slow. There's nothing there. Uh, to everyone's surprise, another gang of pirates had been waiting here for the, uh, what? We we're going to seriously be robbed by other pirates. How sneak of them? You little wasco. Instead of robbing others like part shoot, nonsense to rob plenty of rich and just folk. We just can keep struggling. What? Can I fight? Oh, I'm just supposed to dodge.
am I supposed to shoot? Possible. Uh, there are not no crew. How can they be so strong? But you won't escape either. Have a whiff of our broadside. Step aside and oh, damage. Treasure be ours. It's hard to read and dodge at the same time. So they fled upon. Uh. Yeah, I didn't like that. We won Those villains didn't get in away. Let us over. Our crew members of the Magnetic Get her over here. Where? Hmm. Marvelous. Congratulations. With the strength of the new sailors, Captain Will easily defeats his old enemies, sending them running. Having overcome every challenge the voyage could throw at them, nothing can stop the crew of the Black Naker now. Such, the, such is the loyal crew of the Black Naker, lads. Even when those uh, lily leverage biscuits eat, biscuit eaters ambushed us, nah, not one of you panicked. And of course, our new crew members contributed mightily. Uh, they swept away all opposition like it was so much floats and jetson. Of course, by parts like that, Paimonians could fight two or three bloodloads or more. Get into it, Paimon. Yes, not that bad after all. Uh, it's okay. The journey was pretty thrilling and we've been through thick and thin with Captain Will, so Paimon can be a bit more serious. Based on our research, if we break that stone wall, we can find the legendary treasure. The crucial moment has arrived, I shall give the honor to our heroes, our new companions. And after that, I've got a new idea I'd like to discuss with all of you. Hey, you see how much the captain values us? He's even letting us handle something as important as this. Fire in the hole. Let's open the treasure together. Get ready to celebrate, lads. Heroes, go ahead and open it. No, I get the boat ended there. So I have to walk here. Quit following me. Oh wow, the total of new treasure that I didn't see from the other side before. Yay, we found it! The legendary treasure! So much more! I'm okay really swimming it. Uh, why does this more seem different from the Mora we usually see? Don't tell Paimon. Hey, the legendary pool of Mora is actually just a bunch of decorative co fake coins. Faced with such an unexpected development, uh, what will the crew of the Black Naker do? Captain, we were hard swaggled. Could our intel have been wrong? The legendary treasure? How could it all be fake? No wonder I had a bad, bad feeling about this. The so-called legendary treasure could be a could be bait luring us into a trap. And their goal, the very people who braved hell in high water in search of treasure, and the quality weapons and advanced ships they bring with them, the sailors exhausted by the journey can easily be captured and sold as labor. No, no, we were all tricked. How could this be a giant trap? 
from cost perspective, it makes sense. They can actually have a pool of more right here. Um, you have a point. Pymo forgot we were acting. Okay, even though we aren't any other actors and the set is a bit shabby, Paimon can tell a lot of work when he did this. Paimon thinks we should respect that. Uh, let's hear what our crewmates from the Black Naker had to say. Uh, Captain Will gathers the inconsolable sailors in front of the fake treasure. Captain, is this is this the doing of our, your enemies? No, this is beyond them. If we didn't make it, they'd be disappointed in their old foe. Perhaps the ones behind these are on their way here now. Given our current state, it wouldn't be wise to take them at all. Clean up the area, see if there are any chests we missed, and get ready to withdraw. Oh, I always said hard work is rewarded. See that chest over there? It's for our newest sailors, who've done so much, no arguing, it's theirs even if the rest of us go home empty-handed. Empty uh, not only did we not make any money, we racked up total a lot of losses. Uh, what are we going to do? Keep searching for our dishonest profiteers and to try and scrape together enough booty to satisfy the Kraken. Uh, I was about to point out that on this voyage, we of the Black Naker found a treasure more precious than more and are not going back with nothing to show for it. We found the ways to cross the Roaring Sea, strategies to defeat our enemies, and the courage to face any challenge. Think about it, Mibukos. Even if we found an ocean of Mora, would we really buy peace for our town? That makes sense. We all know how greedy the Kraken is. No matter how much treasure we shove down its filthy gob, they will always ask for seconds. Hey, he's right. I've heard even rich towns have given it dozens of times more treasure than we, yet still hungers. The problem is appeasing is that appeasement of the monster is never the best answer. You're right, if it was up to Paimon, we wouldn't let the monster have its way. But the captain and his crew are just earner people. So we must solve the problem at its source. That's why giving it more more doesn't make any sense. With the fine experience we gain on this voyage, I'm sure we can defeat the Kraken and lift the shadow it gets over our town. Call me hearties, do you trust your captain? It sounds risky, but captain, but it's worth a shot. This is the only way, if we keep giving, eventually we'll have nothing left and we'll have nowhere to run. The captain's right, it's worth risking our lives for. We can't take it any longer. Then it's settled. For, from now on, I will train everyone on the Black Naker for this sole purpose. Especially now, our newest crewmates are true swashbucklers, they are practically invisible. Captain Will is by no means a rich man, but if you lend us your strength, the whole crew of the Black Naker will do everything in their power to repay you. Will you voyage with the Black Naker, train with us, and punish the Kraken uh, for its perfidy? Uh, yeah, that's the spirit. Be brave and fight that awful sea monster. Use less help our friends of the Black Naker. My pleasure. Sushi's on the menu tonight. Are amazing. You're no longer novice sailors. You're old salt. Our members of the Black Naker crew. You're my helpers and the savers of the rest of my crew and all the people in town. Now it's time for the Black Naker to return to port. We'll rest up and prepare for our final battle against the beast. The speaker begins to summarize the end of the first act. Oh, this is the first act. After trumping the numerous trials, the new sailors are now pillars of the crew. Led by Captain Will, the crew is preparing for a crucial counterattack. Please stay tuned for the Black Naker and the Aldevar Cracking Act 2. The Black Naker Strikes Back. Hmm. The Act 2 is the second. You know, it strikes back. And will the next one be the Revenge? Uh, the narration ends, and the motion of the mechanisms inside the cave grinds to a halt. 
There were mechanisms inside the cave. Silence reigns once more. And it just ends here. There, Paimon was just trying to get into it. Maybe they haven't finished the Kraken yet. Okay, nice to have an intermission. You have a point there. If the play was any longer, most guests would be too tired to fight a sea monster. And the set really could use some work. Something as exciting as a boss fight deserves a proper stage. Daya's 3 day reverie certainly has potential. But I was getting curious who this Daya person is. So we won't have the second act. Maybe in the next event we'll have. Unnecessary. Ah, the poster. <laughs> um, I kind of prefer if it was just a poster. We can hang them on a wall. And okay, maybe that there's a third time we come here. We'll have. Quit following me. Revenge of the Kraken. Huh. Huh. Too slow. Uh, which did it change? Okay, change a little. Yeah. So let's teleport there. Actors and actresses have arrived, and the stage mechanisms are operating normally. This performance of Petrifying Gaze, a play from Dias 3 Day Reverie, will now begin. On the edge of a thick and eerie forest, two wise and learned sages happen upon a Hydro Eidolon wandering alone. Please help me, somebody help me, I don't want to abandon my friends. Only the wise should speak. Water droplet. Wait, did the water droplet talk? It's actually the sound of the speaker. Just treat it as, like the water droplet's lines. Ah, so this water droplet is actually a main character in this play, and we have to act along with it. It is truly fortunate that these two wise sages have already researched the language of Hydro Eidolons in depth and can understand its plea for help. This must be a fated encounter, such a portentous meeting. Could you even entertain the notion of not assisting this Hydro Eidolon? Wow, we have our own characters too. That's really cool. Let's get back on topic. What happened to your companion? We, while we were lost in the woods, we happened upon an ancient castle and accidentally awoke the evil spirits slumbering within. Two of their leaders, they, they laid curses upon us. Now, the moment a ghost sees us, we, we turn to stone. I barely managed to escape, but my companions, uh, they must be in such pain. Is this our fault? Of course not. Even those ghosts got up on the wrong side of the bed, there's no excuse to be bullies. Those jerks turning lost water droplets into stone. That's even worse than bullying. Those ghosts are all super bad guys. If you teach them a lesson, they won't soon forget. Can we save your companions? No, the two ghost leaders never show themselves. And the castle is vast, even the strongest and most capable person could never find them. But I heard one of the ghosts say that deep within the castle is a chest, and that chest contains an ancient hex cleansing remedy. That is the only hope. The chest is locked inside a secret chamber, and you must first find the hidden key. But I've already been cursed, and if I go back alone, I'll certainly be seen by the ghosts, and then I'll be turned into stone and trapped forever. That sounds easy, we'll escort you there, find the key and get the remedy. As long as you avoid those ghost keys, you'll be fine, right? 
It will be a walk in the park. That's right, you are both wise sages. And you must certainly know what to do. Please, I'm begging you. But we sure got it character quickly. You guess exactly where the plot was going. Huh, it sounds pretty straightforward. Even if we can beat up the mastermind, taking down the ghosts and saving the water droplets companions should be a piece of cake for you, right? Come on, little water droplets, let's go find the remedy, lift your curse, and save your friends. Oh, Dolan Hydro Idol removes the illusion of the mountain stones, reveal the world was shrouded in gloomy curtains, and strange shadows dance around. They walked and a chill followed them, as if so darkness were firmly fixed upon them. Oh, oh, there's the water droplet. Uh, those rays, they just machines that look like dumb pet birds. Let's knock them all down. I want to remind that if you destroy the surrounds, you need to pay 10 times the cost of compensation. What kind of risk that? How can we have the water droplet? There's no way for me. There's some boxing junk around here. Let's press enough attacks for us. That's a coach. Oh, the verification promises should be reversible if it hasn't been completely imprisoned. That's good, we don't need to be anxious then. Everything will be fine if we can block the race line of sight. Huh. You even want this? Yeah, the British props. Reversible will probably uh go. Oh thanks so much for it for me. That a ball from the spirit mechanism is begging for orange food. I'm sorry because the bad things serves right. This also presents an opportunity. Maybe you'll textfully let us pass through give you some food. Unnecessary. Either passing through the blockade and getting away from the waves, the majestic angry cast appeared. Castles lined tower in the sky, standing as a perceived giant. I hate those texts. If it's not voiced over, it shouldn't auto skip. Oh, 
there's a pop over there. Oh, I didn't write there. There's this mechanism in front of us. Screw should find the key. Preferential stream projector, right? Got it. We'll use to solve the problem right in front of us. Let's go. actually impeding me from pushing it here what well, I can get here oh cover is the curse which is us out of the perfect world we're up here no damage Secret set chest, you made a mistake. Now it's full. You brought help, I see. Well, be prepared for that. Uh, it turned out that the chest was just a decoy. Ref's leader seemed to be afraid of two wise ones. It's so scary. The voice is sounding more and more spooky. No need to be afraid. Water droppage. Found another chest this time. Well, uh, the key to secret room is hidden in the last chest, but if you're thinking, get to it. And the Rev's leaders have this impossible conundrum or double gun. There's not enough time to read anything. Uh, so this was their scheme. Uh, oh, the box. Mm, possible to avoid their line of sight. Uh, this is just cheating. I just want to kick those ghost mechanisms right over. Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? Those ghosts there, it's dangerous. It's like beans. Have you gone insane or have you been on no hope? They simply wish to see your friends in the next world. Oh no, you use its body to block the gaze. Why does it have to be such a noble spirit of self sacrifice? A sudden twist, the lonely Hydro Eidolon has thrown his, itself in front of the ghost vision, using its body to block the fatal gaze, and it is slowly turning to stone. The water droplets turn to stone so we could get the key. The water droplet is to be saved. We had to hurry. Alright, that's right. As long as we are in the line of sight too long, we should be okay. The, the water droplet figured that out. It's so smart, so brave. You know, so let's find the key and get the remedy fast. We can't let the water droplet suffer too long. Wow, I was expecting plot twists over here. Key to the chamber. No, we don't speak. And uh, what is this person that sees their obstructive actions? The two sages watch the poor Hydro Eidolon slowly turn into unfeeling stone before their very eyes, and he no longer responds to their anguished calls. But it was not in vain, for he was only so willing to sacrifice himself because he believed the two sages from the bottom of his heart. Take it and have fun. Uh, ancient Hex Cleansing Remedy. And let's push the other stones. Uh. So, if a water droplet has turned to stone, can you still drink a potion? Uh, how does water even drink water? Oh, maybe this remedy is the kind you rub on. Let's try it out. I never do prepare glaze, control and hydro unload. Such remedies have the parched cleans, raise cast hexes, and restore and dry hydro idolons to their original states. However, the outward appearance of the remedy <coughs> indicates the use of a very common alchemy vessel. 
Is nar this narrative setting related to alchemy or is the theater trope just getting costs? And the speaker continues to describe this strange scene in front of you. The two white sages slowly drop the remedy onto the petrified body of the Hydro Eidolon, and a strange phenomenon begins to occur. As though time were flowing backward, the petrified Hydro Eidolon begins to return to normal. So that is how it feels to be turned to stone. The pain, the agony. I cannot let my friend suffer this fate any longer. But a droplet, how could you just charge a hand like that without saying anything? You scared Paimon half to death. Uh, it's a good thing we got the remedy so quickly. That ghost was so scary, I was so terrified, I couldn't even speak. Also, you are so wise that I think you don't even need me to remind you. Even if I turned completely into stone, I knew you guys would save me right after you got the remedy. And things, and things wouldn't would be just like before, so there was no real need to worry. Mm, did Paimon get you invested in the play? Paimon was just so worried about the water droplet. It's good to dive into your role. Uh, it means Paimon's having fun. Yeah, Paimon is a guest who's here to have fun, but she let the acting get to her head. It's a little embarrassing. But anyway, we succeeded. Now you can take the remedy and save your friends. Thank you, thank you. I am I'm forever indebted to you for all that you've done. My companions and I will always remember your kindness in your hearts. It's nothing, I need to be so polite. Paimon hopes those ghosts won't cause any more trouble. Whenever you guys play in the forest, you have to be more careful. No more coming into this castle. Congratulations, congratulations, the impeccable plans and stratagems of the wise sages and the bravery of the Hydro Eidolons has become a perfect partnership and the curse of the ghosts will soon be completely lifted. After the timely arrival of the wise sages, the ghosts will never again be so reckless. The lonely Hydro Eidolon and its friends can now play again without fear or worry. The dense eerie forest is now gradually showing its peaceful quiet side. Thus ends Petrifying Gaze. Thank you for watching. Hooray, we finished Petrifying Gaze, Paimon really got into it. Uh, the combination of lines on the stage and narration by the speaker does a great job of working the audience. Paimon wonders where Daya learned to do that. If we get a chance, we should definitely ask her. Uh, there's another one. Take it and have fun. Uh, oh yeah, I found that one. Just see. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, hang on, just a moment. Just one moment. You think I've got a sharp tongue? I just tell it like it is. If someone okay. can't handle it, maybe that's their problem. Uh, let me see. I think there's some me. around here. Oh, and there's that as well. Oh, I couldn't get it like that. No. I need to be on the boat. Uh... There. In there. Oh, 
I thought I thought it was fungi. Okay, what do I do here? Um Spyro? No, don't let me at the duck. I think the duck touched the fire. Taking a turn for the better. You even. Uh, damn, that's a bit far from anything. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, but I better get to that boat afterwards. Just should check. Oh, it's up here actually. Uh, so I better not jump down there. Huh, too slow. The wind rises. Damage. Not as practical as Kazuha, but I think it works. You found a new speaker, that's 3D review again. I wonder what this show will be like. All inspections of play mechanisms complete. Animal particles in position. Hello, hello, is everything in place? Those abnormal animal particles, they've been... They've all been taken care of, right? Uh, well, then this performance of Sky Castle Saviors, a play from Dias 3-Day Reverie, will now begin. The story takes place in a remote mountainous area. The people living here are constantly facing flows, floods and storms, and their lives are filled with hardship and misery. In order to provide advanced warning of disasters, a group of courageous warriors build an observation post on top of a towering cliff. Over the years, the lookouts on the high cliffs became a unique tribe known as the Cliff Keepers. The speaker continues to describe the background of the story in detail. The difficulty of trans in transporting goods to the cliffs made the lives of the keepers even more torturous, to the point they had not a single complete home to live in. Uh, the elder of the keepers turned to the miraculous architect, renowned for their expertise. They entrusted the architect with the task of constructing a floating town in the sky. Wouldn't that just be harder to get supplies? The Miracles Architects constructed a remarkable load-bearing structure, providing a solid foundation upon which all the town could be built. Next, the architect embedded tens of thousands of specially designed hot air balloons infused with animal particles within the foundation. The unparalleled buoyancy of the balloons effortlessly lifted the entire town to the very summit of the mountains. The miraculous architect firmly anchored the town at the uh, predetermined height, granting the keepers a stable and cozy haven to call home. Mm. Yet, as time marched inexorably onwards, accidents began to befall the animal, animal art balloons. The keepers soon found their town and slowly losing altitude, tethering on the precipice of shattering into pieces on the mountain summit. A great calamity loomed, accompanied by tremors that shook the inhabitants' hearts as well as their homes. 
Well, what a heavy start for this, to the story. A floating town in the sky on the verge of falling. Now that's a crisis. Then let's take it seriously. Let's learn more about the context. No, let's just take it seriously. Yeah, it looks like there's another speaker over there. Maybe that's where the play continues. So let's go take a look. Am I supposed to get them? Yeah, go on. Uh, was I supposed to? Yeah, there's some in the way. The Elder of the Keepers meets with the Miraculous Architect and provides a detailed explanation of the crisis looming over the flying town. Miraculous Architect, as you can see, each day our town continues to descend lower in the sky. And though we long to safeguard this church home, our haven of warmth and security, regrettably we find ourselves helpless to do so. In addition, quakes have been rocking our town with immense force. Alarming rumors are spreading like wildfire, and a sense of panic is now griping the people. We are all going to get smashed. We are going to get smashed to smithereens. Same elder, I get they were worried, and I've been hearing some rumors down in my project's quality controls. But fret not, I'm here once again to resolve this crisis once and for all alleviating your fears and dispelling any doubts you may have. Just took a, I just took a brief tour of the town and took a look at the monitoring devices I had set up in the foundation. And guess what? I discovered that the fault lies with a few individual lift balloons. It appears that the animal particle levels in certain lift balloons have dropped as if they had been intentionally damaged. However, as long as we fix them, we can prevent the town from plummeting from the sky. So, to restore the town to its plane altitude, we'll need to increase the lift provided by some balloons and install additional fixed anchor cables. Though I should say it's gonna cost a little extra, you see, in most cases, intentional damage isn't covered by the warranty. No worries, we increase the budget to 5 times the initial rate. How's that? Oh, just for repair. 5 times? 5 times? In polite mockingbird. <laughs> oh my, my. Uh, so we need to add in a bit extra. That's wonderful. Wait, 5 times? Don't you think that's a bit much? Back when this town was initially constructed, your budget was already several times what other clients paid. I didn't mention this last time, but before we ran into an exceptionally greedy craftsman. Seeing our resources, we recorded a price over 10, 20 times the market rate. Luckily, we had been through, through in our research and didn't fall for it. But as a result, we have a rough idea of the true construction costs, and your bid has always been far below what, we, what would be expected. Uh, so, you are always loaded? You guys really are? Well, good at keeping a low profile. We live lives of hardship so that everyone below can prosper. Everyone knows it. So, they are quite generous. So it is. The neighboring villages have grown wealthy and often send us opulent gifts and donate vast sums. But our tribe has been accustomed to modest living since our days on the cliff. And so we save most of it. Do such people really still exist in this world? Such humility. Huh. Regardless, I happen to be a master of cost control. I believe that increasing the rate by two and a half times is more than sufficient. Five times is a bit much, don't you, don't you think? I must say, I'm truly impressed. Just as one would expect from a distinguished architect who has been dubbed miraculous. Uh, don't want free money, don't want free money, idiot, idiot. Hey now, you are, you are the bird brain. I earn all my moral honestly. 
When constructing this town, my quote was only slightly higher than the cost of materials and labor. This allowed me to build the finest houses while still having enough money left over to cover my meals for two whole months. As for today's maintenance service, service if the fees are enough to cover my travel and lodging costs for a few days, isn't that the best value for you? The elder who just a moment ago had been moved to tears suddenly grew annoyed and knocked out the pirate preaching on his shoulder. Uh, we are truly grateful. The keepers will forever cherish your kindness and tales of your noble deeds will be passed on from our own generation to generation. Speaking of which, in our previous encounter, you had hired a Sumter Beast caravan and brought hundreds of special storage charts. However, this time around, it seems you have arrived with minimal equipment and without any special preparation. Um, you hit the nail in the head. The primary issue at hand is finding a way to gather sufficient animal particles to restore the lost lift to the balloons. That's no problem, this time we'll handle the animal particles. Collecting them is our specialty. My people are well versed in using animal particles to forecast storms. Let us, the professionals, assist you in this crucial matter. The elder selects two courageous keepers, you, who have patiently waited on the sidelines. You have triumphed over gravity and mountain winds, effortlessly navigating the towering terrain. You are the rising stars of the keepers. Come on, get it. It's our time to shine. This time we are skilled keepers. We just need to fly all over collecting animal particles. That's super easy for us. It's a classic trope. We have practice. Very well. Then we will entrust this task to you. This may be more exhausting than usual. So we will be sure to reward uh, the rewards are commensurate. Working at high is no joke. Please be careful. Don't worry, humble elder and honest architect. Leave it to us. You should just fix the balloons while we go fetch the critical particles. Let's go, Windows. Let's hustle and get the job done pronto. Just have to collect enough animal particles so these keepers can keep their home. Yeah, and this architect will never be able to retire like that. Mm -hmm. Monster projector. Uh, we need it for the upcoming show. Are there particles in there? How many particles do I have to get? Those are all. Just that. I need a counter. I don't know how many particles I'm supposed to get. Repairing those balloons must be really tough too. Who would? Whatever. Three stole the less animal particles. How'd they climb here? Can he make them fly? Wait, were they behind the sabotage of the balloons too? Uh, Indus, let's teach them a lesson and get those animal particles back. So wait, they always get new healers for us to murder during these shows? Jumping, jumping, go! 
bitter pill to swallow. Uh, see the area ways now. Maybe there were hydro eidolons just pretending to be helichurus. And we slapped them. Uh, no more sabotage in the future, got it? The something feels off. Have any of you seen those three before? Could they be actors that act all hard? Actaholic. Where's the engineer? Did the engineer fix the sea monster's mechanisms? Hurry up and get the emergency team to the scene and handle the cleanup. Wait, what? I'm still on the air? Oh, my bad. I'll turn it off now. Thankfully, the guests were able to handle the sudden, sudden emergency themselves. We definitely can't have, can make this mistake again. Okay. They weren't part of the show. After overcoming all kinds of challenging trial, trials, pretty much all the animal particles were successfully collected. The two keepers were so focused that they didn't realize that most, more than half a month had passed. The miraculous architect comes through in a big way, swiftly repairing the lift balloons and the town's foundation. Weird, the foundation is actually above, not below the town. Uh, the narrator on the speaker sounds a bit anxious, don't you? Think? Uh, was that part of the show, or did something go wrong? I almost got no clue, but it pro it's probably not important. Let's go back to the play. The narrator mentioned that we jumped ahead like half a month time, which saves us from waiting for the architect to fix the, fix the balloons. Let's go and meet them now. We didn't get the last. Welcome back. It could not have been easy. Please enjoy a hard-earned rest. Bravo, bravo. You look around and notice that the Miraculous Architect has already repaired all the damaged balloons. Once the animal particles are ready, the disaster will have been completely averted. The Elder calls upon the other keepers who arrive with steaming hot food and refreshing drinks. Your efficiency has also left the Miraculous Architect stupefied, staring in awe. You already completed the collection. That's a full five days faster than my expectations. No wonder the others said you guys were pros. Now that we have enough animal particles, I'll replenish the lift balloons without further ado. The narration from the loudspeaker paints the flowing scene. The miraculous architect whips out a nifty gadget and dashes around, spreading the animal particles you gather through the preset interfaces to devices scattered across all across the foundation. With the lift provided by the balloons restored, the abnormal vibrations come to a sudden halt. The village ceases its descent and gradually ascends back to its original altitude, while the powerful air currents disperse the vast expanse of clouds. A once somber, the once somber sky clears, and the town is once more embraced by radiant sunshine. The keepers erupt in celebration. Awesome, the, town's, the town won't plummet to the ground, and the crisis has been solved. Time for a round of applause. But why are we starting up? It's all in our imaginations in a way, and we're still on the floating town in a way. Vamos next door. How about this? When we get the chance, let's find an expert to illustrate this story. Or even better, turn it into a film. Paimon has a hunch that's going to be a major hit. Maybe Daya has some ideas. I bet it's mainly budget issues. As the ground beneath his feet finally stops shaking, the elder takes a long breath, feeling so moved that he begins to tear up. The town is safe, the town is safe. Fantastic, fantastic. Now we keepers can carry on with our duty. Success. This repair project went off without a hitch, and it's definitely worth of being written into a thesis. Oh boy, it's a perfect example that could even make into a textbook. 
I won't have to worry about food expense for the next two months. Hmm, what kind of marvelous creation shall I dream up? But if I may, it appears that the town is still ascending, and if it surpasses its original altitude, when will it come to a stop? It wasn't anchored. Oops. I may have been focused on fixing the balloons and I forgot to secure the anchor ropes to counteract the lift. No need to panic, the town is rising at a relatively low speed and we can use smaller cargo balloons to attach the anchor. It will be a cinch. I see, I thought that after witnessing the success of these two heroes, you came to the conclusion that we could all walk up walls and live in the sky. Huh, the keepers aren't as mine as that. Please address this issue as soon as possible. Ask for more money, ask for more money. Earn a bit more, earn a bit more. Uh, sure, the other would like to build a lavish birdcage and confine you within it until you learn proper speech etiquette and business ethics. Forget about any extra. I'll, cause, I'll cover it myself. Uh, despite the little hiccup at the end, the storm wrapped up beautifully. Thus, as always, the troubles of the cliff keepers were resolved by the miraculous architect. This floating town in the sky will keep on supporting the cliff keepers, ensuring lasting peace and prosperity in the reg region. And thus, the save sky castle saviors come to an end. Thanks for watching. In car, in car, the curtains have fallen, and even though it wasn't perfect, Paimon thought it was decent. If Paimon was a wealthy merchant, Paimon would invest a ton of money into Dyer's 3 day reverie and make every prop uh, and scene amazing. Let's look into that when the opportunity arrives. arises. We need to gain a solid understanding of their financials as before investing. Absolutely, Paimo hopes we get a chance to meet with the mysterious Daya. And the visitors and staff, I have exciting news to announce. Today, two visitors have completed Daya's 3D reverie and set a new record. We prepared a special gift for our two esteemed visitors and cordially invite them to claim a gift by the broadcast. Uh, we need to recite the key secret code to open the door behind the referee. Huh? Hear that? They're preparing gifts for us. Maybe you'll we'll even get your medalla. Let's go to broadcast station now. Wow! I've never seen half the stuff in here before! Okay, that's done. And... Back there. Wait, how come we didn't notice this secret door before? What? There's a door on the floor? Oh, Paimon knows. Let, let's say the password phrase again, then a new path will open together now. Okay, we did to register, and times like this are perfect to have a little ceremony. With the cleaning of machines, a door open. Uh, Come knew it, a hidden chamber filled with secrets. <laughs> Ready or not, here we come. Here we go. Okay. Uh, uh. It's all hydrons. Hmm. 
they can speak with that. There's so many water droplets here. What are they doing getting around that giant machine? I'm just confused. What is this machine for and where's Daya? Welcome to the three day reverie. Surely you must be confused by the scene unfolding before your eyes. Then allow us to demonstrate. Come on, loafers, stop napping. Now, place one, action two. Let us. Give thanks to fate, dear travelers, for your wanderings have finally brought you here. Uh, is that water droplet using the announcement speaker to play a recording? It sounds so familiar. Where has Pamela heard it before? Uh, is the announcement we first heard regarding this attraction? It was playing this record. recording. Hustler, you're up. Uh, place 3, action 7. The chief mate that appears in front of the crew recruits. Yeah. The chief mate that appears in front of the new recruits is dressed raggedly, covered in bandages from head to toe. It is readily apparent that they barely survived the intense battle not long ago. Pamela remembers this from the Black Naker and the Odevar Kraken. This is part of Pyroia after we met with the chief mate. The narration we heard then. Was also played like this. What amazing timing! The Harun's Karun and Black Naker are about to reach the pass where the treasure is hidden. Hurry up and prep the scenery and props. Don't you dare screw this up. But didn't he? Didn't he talk to me sometime? Like commenting on something they just said. The water droplet is operating that device, Paimon can see how. Monitoring, broadcasting, operating the mechanisms, those capabilities are enough. Correct, the function of this massive device is to control the timing of all the mechanisms in every play. Our diligent hydro idolons are constantly monitoring the progress of each show, so that whenever tourists arrive at the design spots, they hear the proper narration and each prop and device is activated on time. As long as guests follow procedure, a fantastical 3 day reverie will play out before their eyes. Of course, if guests try to live part way through, the, through or behave too unexpectedly, then it will really impact their enjoyment of the show. We just don't have enough staff to handle things like that right now. Anyway, I think all the guests will behave themselves, right? That's so amazing. We were having so much fun, we didn't realize how much was going on behind the scenes. So many props and mechanisms have to be carefully controlled. It must be really hard to pull off the, the shows. The design is brilliant. Great timing, teamwork. So, is this Daya talking to us now? Are you using this hydro idol to control the three day reverie? Why not just come explain things yourself? Pamushu has so many questions for you. Correct, but there's more to it. Everything you have seen and everything inside this broadcast station, including the chief director, fake playwright, loafer, hustler, and the Harold Scarum as well as the other unseen and unheard hydro idols, maintenance staff, of course. Combine all this and that is Daya, not a person, but the entire system itself, creator and controller of the show. So who recorded the voice? That is not a person, but a system. Wait a second, that's overloading Paimon's brain. Paimon knows that water droplets are smart, but can they actually design such a complicated system by themselves? There must be a designer behind the curtain, and someone to look over the scripts, right? No, I don't think so. But they can't speak. There must be someone to speak. 
for them and in uh, the first time at least yes that was the case at first your surprise expected long story short that is three day referee started with the passionate director Sosimus. During his short stay in Veluria Mirage, director Sosimus poured his energy into putting on exciting plays and never had time for anything else. As he spent more time with the Hydro Idolons, he discovered their intelligence and rich emotions. Hydro Idolons enjoyed his plays and looked forward to the next show. They also wanted to share their enjoyment with visitors. An idea grew inside Sosimus' head. Could Hydro Idols direct or even design a show? So bold that sounds like teaching a group of children to be directors. Indeed, it was difficult. Fortunately, everyone worked together, our joint effort overcoming all obstacles. Director Zosimus trained some of the Hydro Idols most passionate about plays, teaching them the critical concepts involved. After some trial and error, Zosimus wrote several simple plays and detailed explanations regarding the thought behind them. If the DS help, he built the controller, as well as all the mechanisms connected to it. In addition to the lines from the plays themselves, Dr. Director Zosimus also recorded lots of commonly used words that we could combine into sentences to communicate with guests. Ah, so okay, so they are actually they have a voice synthesizer with Sosimus' voice, but wouldn't they recognize the voice as the same one from that not real guy on the other floor? Uh, after a lot of practice, we finally learned to put all the three samples plays without a hitch. The three plays are indeed. Uh, the Black Naker and the Aldevor in Kraken, Petrifying Gaze, and Sky Castle Saviors. That is to say, Director Zosimus prepared the foundation and infrastructure for the S3 Day Reverie, as well as left the scripts with accompanying instructions. We definitely never noticed the whole thing was controlled by water droplets. That's quite a compliment. We appreciate you validating our hard work and improv improved many of our ideas correct. This is the reason why we wish to provide you with a token of our gratitude and show you everything that went into the production of the show. Don't mention it, we enjoyed ourselves. That's right, we experienced a really special attraction and broadened our horizons. We should be thanking you, Daya. Ah. Then we continue onward to our next goal, writing our own scripts. To do this, we improve our understanding of place and keep collecting new materials. The one called Fake Playwright here collects stories from visitors and enhances our ideas with those. Even if it can meet suitable guests itself, Fake Playwright talks to other Hydro Idolons about their encounters. Also, when we tell our stories to Fake Playwright, he helps you write new plays. Exactly. If you have time, please talk to Fake Playwright more. Also, please continue to enjoy your time in the Valorian Mirage. And please talk more with other Hydro Idols here. No worries, Paimon is love here. We'll definitely provide you with lots of great material. Um, actually, there's something else. I must be curious uh, about it for a while. Why is it called 3 Day Referee? Could it be that Director Sosimus spent 3 days on each play, or maybe like 3 days in total? I know this one. It refers to yesterday, today, tomorrow, right? Why? Yesterday, today, tomorrow sounds reasonable to Paimon. That means Director Sosimus, I mean, all of Daya is working so very hard on the play day after day. Nice one. Unfortunately, it's not quite that deep. Actually, the true meaning behind three days is uh, plenty of time left to do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll really be in the zone tomorrow, and if I don't finish tomorrow, I'm dead meat. Seriously? 
luxurious chest. <laughs> you even want this? This one is in March. Oh, maybe I got. Oh, I think I had marked it by accident. But yeah. Director in Chief. Hi, I'm the acting director in of this attraction. Do you have any questions for me? The water droplet speaking. Whoa, the water droplet is speaking again, and its voice is slightly different. Uh, what did Paimon say again? Uh, your reaction is exactly as I expected. Don't be so surprised, and listen carefully. The sound is coming from the speaker by the wall. The speaker by the wall? Let me see the speaker by the wall. Uh. I'm speaking to you via pre-recorded lines. Anyway, uh, it was Idi, uh, I mean, Daya, who prepared these lines in advance. As for the specifics, you can talk to engineer. His explanation will certainly be clearer and more comprehensive. So that's what's going on. For some reason, it feels like anything is possible when we are in the miraculous Villarreal Mirage. Why are you the acting director? That's a good question. It's because I don't think I'm the best candidate for the job. My partners and I were all more or less influenced, influenced by Dr. Sosimus, and we are equals in terms of talent. We're busy expanding our repertoire and polishing our skills. My partners often present ideas to me and sometimes fake playwright goes over my head and just does things. But as long as the majority supports it and the show is good, then I'm happy too. If one of the others becomes more capable than me and wishes to manage the project, I would immediately give up the position. You're too humble, shouldn't a director be more forceful? If you are always accommodating the opinions of others, it's bound to lead to arguments, isn't it? Name this mentality for the better, group projects are complicated. You have a point, if we, if it's the result of careful discussion, then maybe you could put together lots of creative ideas. Of course, any interested guests are welcome to try as well, perhaps one of them will be a better director than I. Like the two of you, you're clearly talented. Uh, us? Wanna give it a shot, Paimon? You might become a great director. Well, now that Paimon thinks about it, performing with the water droplets will be really interesting. Paimon will leave the writing to and focus on directing. Yeah, Paimon will leave communicating with the water droplets to you too. You're really good at that kind of thing. You're going to make me run errands too. Our meal, our meals provided. That's not what you should be focusing on. Just think about it. The more responsibility you have, the more you can mold the show to your liking. If we are going to turn our stories into an interesting play, you are the best person to deal with all the details. Shall we start discussing things now? I'm so far up. However, producing a play, producing a play is no easy task. You encounter all sorts of challenges. I suggest you speak with the others and mentally prepare yourselves. The extra water droplets, you're, that's so considerate of you, but you know, there's no need to be so modest. I'm certain you're a great director. That's great, but would they all have such long lines? About the directing methodology for the three-day referee. Methodology? What methodology? Oh, right. I was wondering about the decision behind using narration and dialogue to help guests imagine the scenes in the play. About that, if I'm being honest, it's actually pretty simple. It's mainly, we're broke. Actually, everything you experienced is a result of a compromise. I've only seen a few of director Zosimo's films, so I have some hazy ideas, but we encounter great difficulty trying to realize them. During planning, each scene only had a few lines, but many actors, props, and backdrops, all of which cost a lot. In the words of Sosimus, money could solve any problem back in his homeland. But in Valerian Mirage, the only currency to spend is the labor hours of, our, uh, of us hydro idols. Consider the Black Naker and the Aldivar Kraken, for example. 
if we were to recreate a fully armed powered ship, a huge mechanical sea monster, and even dig out large expanses of water for the performance, you guys can shape shift, just get more idolons. It would take millions, maybe even billions of more. If we convert it into working hours for us hydro idolons, it would take months, even if we got our friends to help. And that much, uh, Paimon actually underestimated the cost. That's why we gave up on most backdrops and props and chose to focus on our efforts on the Choo Choo Kart and the final ba battle. The way we would be able to give our audience a few unforgettable experiences instead of everything being equally mediocre and forgettable. That kind of makes sense. The Choo Choo Kart in the Black Naker was amazing. At the very least, it felt like a ship and the final battle was pretty special. Sounds like something we heard in Liyue. What was it again? Prioritizing, making compromises. Right, that's it. It's about focusing on what's important and necessary. It's is that also why there are so many actors for dialogue or a narrator on stage and just speakers. That's probably because we don't have enough actors. Originally, we all agreed to go on stage as actors once we had completed our other responsibilities. The friend you saw in Petrifying Gaze was our star actor, trained by Zosimus himself, Actaholic. Actaholic even planned to give a surprise lesson, but since none of us finished our work on time, Actaholic was left as the only actor on stage. In short, the shortage of actors and labor are two sides of the same difficult coin. Uh, it's holding us back now more than ever. Now, rehearsing, rehearsing us, uh, for a show doesn't seem easy at all. The yeah, director is such tiring work. That water droplet looks so lonely. Uh, let's go comfort if you get a chance. Uh, about the other members of the troop. Well, I really want to introduce everyone to, in the troop to you, but ever since Zodzimus enlightened us, we've each been busy pursuing all sorts of knowledge. Every one of them has formed a unique personality now. It's really way too complicated to try and convey everything over the broadcast system. Also, there's a lot of new words and voice lines that Engineer hasn't finished working on yet. Ah, so Engineer can... Can create new words. Yeah, just basic sounds. You can, yeah, but that's a lot of basic sounds. Maybe Engineer can shift the tone of the voice to make sound like different persons. So, I can't explain things with, with recordings yet. You have to speak the, to them yourselves. Hold on. Paimon needs some time to digest all of that. Did Paimon hear something about another water droplet? Voice lines. The direction is to be gesturing and acting out something, but it's almost impossible to figure out. Looks like there's nothing we can do. The director of water droplets doesn't have the ability to talk about the topic. Now let us do what is said and speak to others. To get a chance, we should ask the engineer about the voice lines the director mentioned. Uh, pardon us for a moment. How polite of you. If you have any questions about the show, feel free to ask me. Hustler. Loafer. Damage. Just a few, just a few. Work, work, work. Uh, sprint to the finish. Go above and beyond the call of duty. Win early. Take it easy there. When one test is done, I can start another. I will go wherever the need is greatest. Do they ever have to rest or eat or get some sustenance? Or can they just work endlessly? It's just a little water droplet, but it's got such a scary aura. It seems absolutely in love with working. Just getting close to it feels like Paimon will be dragged along to work with it forever. Uh, they're just here talking about me. 
No, we never did anything of the sort. We're busy people too, so we'll be on our way. Oh, busy? You're really busy. How about you give some of your work to me? Hmm. I'll take any job, anything, and I can learn it if I like the know-how. I love challenging new jobs. Did we misunderstand these water droplets? Instead of dragging others along to suffer with it, it actually does the work for them. Uh, so water droplets, what work do you usually do? Let me think. I don't think I had any fixed responsibilities. The chief director asked for my help with controlling the show mechanisms. Fake playwright asked, makes me run errands and carry reference books for the script writing. Engineer sends me to clean the rails, a loafer has asked my help making props. Sounds like you're the master of all trades. Sounds like an intern. Whatever you call it, I'm fond of using diverse, new and high-intensity jobs to hone my abilities in all aspects. In this way, I can obtain an in-depth understanding of every aspect of a show and do them all well to surpass Zosimus, who only knows how to talk a big game. Kama wonders if Zosimus has led these water droplets astray. But given how passionate it is, maybe you'll get mad if you mention the past. We should avoid asking about that for now. Anyway, both of you are important guests to the entire attraction. Can I help with anything? Oh, and Zopar is still preparing to enter the industry. We don't need your help for now. Understood, then I'll be going back to work. Good luck, I hope you one day bless me with an unnamed stream of diverse work. And the second option was... Glace at Paimon, we hope she gets the hint and live quietly. Alright, Paimon's kinda curious about what is working on, but let's not disturb it. Uh, oh, two special guests. Is there... Ah, oh, uh, they have different subtitles. Power saving mode worker. Two special guests. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm loafer and I specialize on lowest effort solutions. Are you especially fond of loafing around? Yeah, but I would like to know too. Do you get the name because you never do any work? Uh, it's not like that. Whether it's controlling the play's progress or making the necessary props and scene elements, I've always completed my work on time. Loafing is a state of mind. It strives to achieve the most with the least effort. For example, instead of making something three-dimensional, only the front and back of a scene element is prepared. So, uh, in words of the chief director, it saves us a lot of time. Doesn't that mean it has no sides? It's intriguing the audience's eyes all we need to do. For example, showing down the choo-choo cart right in front of the scene element and then shooting off right when it's about to move past it. Uh, doing that will keep most of the audience focused on the front of the scene element. Think about, didn't you do the same with the scene monster's minions? Otherwise, our troop wouldn't have time to complete the more important scenes. Instead of wasting time focusing on the sides of Sea Monster's minions, the completeness of the entire experience is definitely more important. That does make sense. From what you said, calling you loafer is kind of a compliment. Kind of makes sense, but it also sounds like a lot of ballooning. Free your minds on our guests. Uh, if you are like that fool Zosimus and fail to understand the importance of saving time and effort where you can, you shouldn't bother with working at all. After all, if you seek perfection in every detail, the work will be endless. If you allow insignificant details to affect the main performance, you'll be killing the goose and that lays the golden egg. Of course, all this based on the premise that there is a serious shortage personal. If we were to continue using such methods with sufficient staffing, then instead of loafing, we would, we would just be good for nothing trash. At times like that, we should make fundamentals beyond reproach. 
then strive for perfection every detail while still utilize, utilizing this philosophy to make the whole show even more impeccable. You've almost convinced Paimon. Paimon definitely give it some more thought. Then we'll leave you Lofi. Thanks so much. Your wisdom lights up my day. Come again when you're free. What are those titles? Sir Overtime Maniac. The new world. Just covering this shift. Engineer, you you too sure for of energy? Unfortunately, I don't have time to entertain you. Uh, can only do repairs. How do you get so exhausted? That painting sound was so realistic. It's Paimon first time hearing water droplets so tired. Paimon never realized this is what a worn out droplet water droplet would be like. Well, guess it can be helped. That's what you call an occupational hazard. Technical maintenance. Quite a specialized term to pop out of nowhere. What does it refer to? Could you elaborate? Oh, it's too complicated. I doubt I'd ever finish, so let me give you a quick rundown instead. This broadcasting device before you is something idea made for Zosimus. I heard that I heard it was made based on some new research out of the academia. However, due to some design flaws, it works very well at times, but it often has serious bugs that can be quite troublesome. We hydro idols are incapable of speech, so we rely on pre-recorded voice lines to converse with you. All the narration used in the show is pre-recorded as well, I'm sure you understand why. Yeah, we understand the concept, but all of you still react very naturally. Speaking with you often feels as smooth as speaking to a normal person. That's because Idea did everything she could to find us a lot of audio materials. Then she broke apart the recordings so each word could be broadcast and used independently or in any order. Thus, we gain the ability to use the device dev to form sentences for individual pre-recorded words and respond to you. Of course, we have pre-recorded answers for certain questions. Predict potential questions and prepare answers in advance for a smooth conversation. That's what fake playwright practices in its free time. You could say it is a hobby. Fake, play fake playwright felt it will help us would help with its writing, but he later realized that it wasn't the issue, but that's another top completely. Well, so some things you say are made on the spot, you must have prepared so many voice lines. And if you lack recording for a certain word, you have to find a way to work around it. Indeed, you've discovered a critical issue, this broadcasting device requires too many voice samples and I'm in charge of maintaining everything. And everyone has been developing unique personalities lately, so even more voice lines updates are necessary. I simply can't keep up with it all. Really? You sound so... you sound way overworked. That kind of workload is horrifying. You deserve a massive raise and bonus. Uh, just this alone isn't too much work for me. The problem is I have to maintain all the other equipment and mechanisms. Like the device for the Sea Monsters minions, so just getting to the to the set of each play takes so much time, and yet I still have to repair everything that break that broke. It's also Osimo's fault. He's the worst. Just because I showed the tiniest bit of interest in the equipment, he trained me to be one the only only maintenance guy. Can you train others? The other guy seems interesting interested in work. I couldn't have gotten a few more hydro idols. No matter how fond you are of something, you get tired of it when you have to do it all day every day. Now calm down, don't be sad, cheer up. Maybe your troop will, will recruit other water droplets, and once you have more members, they'll be able to take some work off your hands. I hope so, but I wonder when I'll be able to find any qualified new members. I should go ask Dia when I get the chance. 
But there aren't that many people around here. How many plays are you performing? Please take some rest. I appreciate the concern. I'll take a break once I'm done here. But will there ever come a day when my work is truly done? Oh, Scarrow. Seems to be the Hydro Eidolon from before that was operating some mechanisms according to the Chief Director's instructions. Without a console of its own, it is incapable of speaking. It just constantly trembles with fear as if it has done something wrong. <coughs> I'm not really sure who is this guy. He's not the guy we were with in the forge and castle. There was nobody on the boat. There was nobody. Oh no, don't. There were a few. Uh, there were a few on the balloon. <coughs> Play playwright. Uh, this one has. This one doesn't have a device. Uh, take stuff from everywhere. No, I didn't read the other one. Hi, Steam audience members. I'm Fake Playwright, one of the staff working on 3D Reverie. Can I help with anything? What are known as Fake, fake Playwright? That's a good question. It seems I have some explaining to do. Long story short, if I can't write anything appropriate soon, I'll be fired. Uh, whoa, is it that bad? You make it sound like water drops have strict rules too. Appropriate. Uh, what do you mean? Are you referring to impactful dialogue? No, not at all. Dialogue is the easiest part. Writing beautiful lines, fooling the audience into thinking the lines are something pro profound. That's something any hydro I don't know, with just a few months of intensive training. No, even a Spectre could do that. Are you guys related to Spectres? But to transform a splendid section of the play into a scene before your eyes, now that cannot be done without a careful division of labor and corporation. With that, that is the essence of being appropriate. Clear as mud? How oh, abstract. Uh, could you explain it in a way that Paimon can understand? No surprise there, it takes a certain amount of creative experience to resonate with this topic. Then I'll sh slow down enough to give you time to catch up. A good playwright must understand the troops' limits and resources, and write the script with those in mind. Even if it's the simple scenes, you must carefully determine the actors and props required. But as you can see, we don't, we plain don't have enough actors, and our prop selection is relatively limited as well. So it certainly can go overboard when writing this the script because once it's in the show, the audience may feel a deep disconnect between what is described and what is shown. My failure to sh my failure to take that in consideration resulted in me writing a few unrealistic and entirely unusual scripts, and it even ended up delaying the schedule of the entire troupe. Ouch, that's terrible. If worse comes to worst, then Paimon will just draw figures on wooden boards and use them as actors. Paimon can draw some props on wood too, you know? Signal the audience. Hmm, we can install a few wheels on the bottom and move them around to display characters' movement and interact with props. If we slam them together and throw in some exaggerated sound effects, we can even recreate fight scenes. It would be just like when the sea monster's minions shoved up, uh, show up in the Black Naker play. Economical showmanship. Even Paimon can do it? No, absolutely not. According to Mr. Zosimo's book, that's on the level of terribly unforgivable and should be used for insignificant supporting characters at best. Instead of leaving a few standings for actors which just stand there chatting loudly all day, it's better to just leave them out completely. Doing that, it only interferes with the audience's imagination, yet fails to fully convey the scene. It's safer to avoid limiting the audience's imagination and use words alone to lead them through it. 
fake playwright seems to be seriously gesturing and acting out something, but the speaker remains silent. Uh, I just don't think... I just don't have the words yet. So many lines haven't been recorded, I can't say them. Fake playwright seems to be very principled. As soon as we brought up this subject, it just can't stop talking. High standards for oneself are a good thing. It's better than not seeking to improve. Anyway, let's stop for now, otherwise this might go on forever. But perhaps it may not be that difficult for the two of you. That's true, if you think about it, you shouldn't be afraid of creating something just because someone may be harsh on it. <laughs> Looks like in Paimon are talented at this too, or Paimon should say that we are made of the right stuff, though we haven't really started. Anyway, you are talking about this made Paimon curious about something. Did Zosimos actually read that book? Oh, culture playwright, can we have a word? I told you, I'm just one of the staff. It's like you're mocking me when you address me like that. Hey, aren't you being a little too sensitive? That's not what it means. He is always sincere. Forgive me, being sensitive is something that comes naturally to us artistically gifted playwrights. According to Mr. Zosimo, sometimes people in the industry have been misunderstood or even ruthlessly attacked because they were careless with their wording. While such a demanding audience may not appear in the Valerian Mirage, Mr. Zosimo always said that whenever we create something, we must be prepared to receive the attention of a larger audience and never leave it, to, leave it up to luck. Mm. We may have gone off topic a bit, so those are more my own personal expectations. You could also consider them suggestions. Those expectations are so strict. Are you going to quibble over every single little word? So if we create a show based on our own experiences, like the story of the animal Archon and the Valley, would people come forward just to fuzz over things like uh, something like how this is practical or how dare you make the animal Archon seem so carefree? That's far too presumptuous. Just laugh it off. Creative art should be fun, not overly cautious. What? You've ascended to the plane of transcendence before you've written a single script? One of Mr. Zosimo's books mentioned such a concept. Even if we exercise the utmost care while writing a script, we are bound to encounter many who, will consider, who would consider our criticizing our work excess, excessively. If you fear such criticism and dare not fully exercise your creative freedom, then you are putting the cart before the horse. In short, listen to what is right and ignore the harsh criticism. Such transcendence is of the great benefit to writing scripts. It's a realm that all playwrights dream of. It is easy to say such things, but actually doing so is a completely different story. But perhaps it may not be that difficult for the two of you. That's true, if you think about it, you shouldn't be afraid of creating something just because someone might be harsh on it. Uh, it looks like you know, the Paimon are talented, this too, or Paimon should say the same thing, aren't they? Anyway, yeah, same thing about the book. We're here to provide material for you. That voice said that we should talk to you and tell you interesting stories that will help with your script writing. Also, Chief Director heard about your adventures from idea. Yes, your assistance is necessary. But as you can see, the process of writing a script is very long. I'm worried that your stories will be so rich and detailed that I may that I'll fail to remember them after a time. Please use the device in front of me to make a recording that I can review it whenever I want. We're experts at that. But in Spymo, we will allow you to, the, we'll allow you to decide what kind of material you should provide to this 3 d reverie. After a short discussion with Paimon, you select some. Come on, there was four lines of that. That's not the time to read any of that. 
Well, such a long recording. This is more mature than I ever expected. I shall especially write a line to extol the great deed you have performed here today in sharing your stories. <laughs> Paimon wonders what kind of show this super professional water droplet will turn our stories into. Paimon can wait. Uh, don't mention it, it won't take more of your time. Right, we were only here to observe, we'll leave you to it then. You're so polite and careful with your words, I hope you have a pleasant visit. Okay, tell us what was this guy titled. Fingers crossed. Okay, it's done, it's over. Oh, there was a lot of people. It was like two hours to complete that. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to complete that last time I was playing. Uh, apparently there's another chest that shows up here after we defeat the the crack the sea monsters minions. I'm not sure if those tentacles were part of the Kraken or another sea monster. Uh, uh, uh. Following me. Quit following me. Yeah, this this wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah, I came here yesterday. This wasn't. Damage, it's too slow. Up. <laughs> Come on. It's much farther than this one. Unnecessary. Uh, is that a chess? Oh no, that's oh. yeah, that's the choo choo cart. Uh, where did I stop? There was a choo choo cart. Oh, yeah, the castle. Castle start it was down here. No, actually, no, I need to go where, where the castle ended at the castle. Um, <laughs> Too slow. Didn't write it here, did we? <laughs> yeah, just that. I think that was the last thing around here. Okay, let's continue elsewhere.
Mm. Over here. Following me. Huh. Oh, there's more here. Oh, what's that? This is an incredible place. There more stone in the center. It's similar to the views you see on Sam, but some seems. The performance is secret, let's get exploring. Yeah, there must be some backstory to this place. Oh. Look at that. Is that a water droplet? Yeah. The most things say they will let us to a clue. Who am I fighting? Who am I fighting? You even want this? Great. There are some pieces of paper here, and there are some more notes. Scattered yet well preserved pages. A great artist must leave something behind for future generations. I, Guy Verheikt. Verheikt. I don't know. Guy Verheikt. Maybe. I am confident that one day people will compete just to read my ideation notes. All the troubles I've been dealing with are but trivial stumblings block, stumbling blocks along my path to success. I see little promise in the youngsters at the Darshan. They just do whatever they te their teachers say and never take the time to consider where the future of our lies. And those teachers are the, an arrogant lot, their trust in nothing but their old experiences leaves them unable to adapt, let alone expect them to have the insight to learn new things and expand their horizons. A falling out with them was inevitable. And what's the worst that could happen? Never going into the studio again? At least I'm not living in the past. The masterpiece I'm going to create will prove my point. Following ossified rules and clinging uh, slavishly to by the book research is not the way to achieve something great in art. Of course, it is equally unwise to cater to the aesthetic conceptions of the many while disregarding one's independent thoughts. To capture the minds of all who lay eyes on the painting with the absolute beauty of our lines and shades, that is what we are supposed to pursue. A work of art like that must be unimpeachable in its details and coloring. Only thus can a sense of beauty and that connects us be conveyed. 
to achieve something like that, I must travel around the world and to gain different experiences of beauty and find that which unites them. It is time for me to set out on my artistic journey. On the one hand, I shall find the universal beauty that exists in the hearts of all people. On the other, and on the other, I shall enlighten the common people with my aesthetics, paving my road to fame. Judging by the words they used, it seems like a painter's diary. So confident, even a bit arrogant. But Paimon gets it, without that kind of nerve, no matter what you do, it can be hard to master it quickly. But this diary won't, doesn't say much, Paimon is kind of curious about what happened to him after that. Perhaps we can find the rest of the diary. No, no more tags. Elsewhere, somewhere else. You know, let's just keep an eye out for it, okay? No more tags. Uh... Oh, there was a quest. I started a quest. There are more quests. Uh, let's see. Just that. Mural looks different now. I think that the robots was guiding us to choose her to fix this mural. Looks like I gotta fix the stream projectors. Maybe something will happen. Oh, no, it just stopped. Round. Let's follow it by the church card. <laughs> Blocked again. We okay, can have a look around, perhaps there's another way. Strange, first case such strange or strange is freezing fear. I'm gonna send your help. Ah! Ah! Oh, and somebody was just sitting here watching the. What's that there doing hitting in the corner like this? Scattered tree? I skipped one. Looking back now, I was indeed sh short sighted. After spending several months in the desert, I ran out of Mora and began to question the existence of the fairy. Coarse words even escaped my lips. Uh, the benevolent and powerful fairy in the legend does exist. 
I was even fortunate enough to find the domain shrews. Finding for my finding for myself temporary respite there. The benevolent and powerful Ossinid asked that I call her Idea. This name Idea has indeed been mentioned in many legends and fair tales, and it has largely represented a benevolent soul who knows human interests and hearts well. Intents and hearts well. This means that I was right, she must know of universal beauty. Idea appeared when I was on the verge of giving up. This must be a sign that all the hardships I have been through were tests she set before me. I must forsake all errant thoughts and present my request to her in all earnestness. While she has yet to assess my wish to my wish, citing such reasons as I don't force changes on others and we shouldn't take shortcuts by way of declining to directly raise my aesthetics and drawing skills. But she gave me a magical drawing board as a gift, together with painting materials that never seem to run out. I suspect that there is no realistic hope that I might improve by leaps and bounds in a single day. I should probably do as it is a hint I should and hold myself with real, real practice. This is a comfortable place to be anyway. I don't have to worry about food or clothing. And there are wondrous creatures named Hydro Eidolons to keep me company here. One might feel creeped out upon first encountering these flexible pudding like creatures with beautiful color of gems. But I have found that they are all quite easy to get along with. They make far better company than most arrogant fellows with fake smiles at the studio. As we wander around the Valerian Mirage, I bore witness to a scene of unimaginable magnificence. Uh, if I could often find things left here by different people and hear all sorts of interesting stories. I suppose you could say that my horizons were indeed expanded. This change of pace leaves me very relaxed when I paint. Maybe I should just go with the flow. Mm. It turns out that the huge stone slab outside is the one that Idea gave to the painter as a canvas. Mm, it seems not only he had found landscapes he loved in the Veluria Mirage, but also made friends with water droplets and found some new inspirations for his paintings. Quite a fortunate encounter, better than practicing to the point of obsession. Hey, not that I mention it, but I almost heard that some people go nuts after a failure. They just keep trying harder and harder until they lose themselves. Thanks to the painting tools Idea provided to the company of and the company of the water droplets is staying on the right track. So this is the third one. Didn't I lose one behind. Take it and have fun. Oh, take it and have fun. But those torches did nothing.
Take it and have fun. <laughs> Too slow. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's it's not all. Uh, how do I turn it on? Do I need a Droplet nearby. Bench. Done. Why did you stop here? I stopped in front of you to get that. Okay, those those flames there were probably to scare it. Okay, here I start the moral. Okay. Uh, I'm better. I can't. So. Let's follow the path. This? There's there here it looks really well preserved. Part four. Yeah, where were was part two? Thanks to the companionship and help of the Hydro Idolons, I finished my first piece of work despite bumbling along quite a bit. 
by the standards I once held, I would not have rated this mural as a masterpiece in any way. But in the passage of time and the changes in the environment of the mirage itself, even displacement, I must admit that in truth, this is the work I have put the most effort into and the one I love the most. I woke it woke me up from my silly dreams. I used to be a young and haughty, uh, and I drew false conclusions from my rough understanding of what great undertaking known as painting, uh, without ever having put in time to study the relevant techniques. Only when I found myself puzzling over my great masterpiece did I find that I was simply not good enough. I once emphasized the an interplay of light, shadow, and lines that would capture people. But that was me holding onto too many arrogant fantasies, chasing a perfection in form only. Perhaps there is no such thing as perfect painting technique or universal standards of beauty that I all ascribe to. During my stay in the Velar Mirage, Elia and the Hydro Eidolons showed me a lot of stunning e scenes that told me about the stories behind them he told me about the stories behind them and as objects situated in the real world it is impossible for their every color and contour to meet some standard set by art criticism yet they captivated me inspired my soul in countless ways what those lines and shades capture was not my fastidious eye but my heart it was through my heart that they resonated with me. And that is why I inscribed all that I saw and heard here in the form of this mural. I have now come to believe that elegant technique cannot be the ultimate focus of, for great art, nor can one only be concerned with polishing every last detail to one unsurpassed sheen. Instead, we should begin with something that can move human hearts, with our shading and lines to follow from that. Of course, this might just be my one-sided opinion. Never again will I be so arrogant as to try constructing general, empty principles that all people can acknowledge. Uh, all I want is to achieve something good in my own eyes and try conveying the emotion to, that so moved me to others. As such, I cannot stay here forever, I must return to my daily existence and put my paintings, painting skills into practice. This mural shall bear witness to my days in the Valerian Mirage, and it shall be my gift to Idea and the Hydro Idols. Oh, now that's a relief. He untangled the knot in his heart and improved his painting skills. Paimon thinks he'll definitely be really successful. So he left the, his water droplet play, friends behind, which sounds a bit sad to Paimon. Not all, all artists can accept imitations. Insist on one's own uniqueness makes sense. Uh, Paimon can understand that. There is still something that confuses Paimon. He mentioned in the diary that the mural can lose its shape and shift. But even after such a serious accident, the mural seems alright. Isn't these water droplets? They protect their friend's mural. Oh, that's right. No wonder the water droplets are so familiar with the stream projectors and restoring the mural. It's so moving. Water droplets may not look that bright, but they are really considered the loyal friends. Can you put a phone you can? Can I change well here? No. Uh. 
please help. <laughs> mm. No, he's here. Six <sighs> two. What do you want from me? Take it and have fun. Like an emergency. Behold. A bitter pill to swallow. Take it and have fun. Let me see one. Ah, please check the hydro monument. Replay the other monument as well. That was it. I needed his help. Necessary. Come on. Come on, why didn't you come? Just that? Sucks. I haven't killed that yet. Come on, hit it. Ah, oh, maybe this part unnecessary. Too. There's some diaries on the ground over here. What's going on? Have other people been here before? Ah, this part too. 
does not make sense, there must be something wrong. I must admit that I have encountered some extraordinary artists ever since I left the studio. I also admit that they can surpass the masters even without using any particularly famous technique. I'll be with some trick, or trick to it, I'm sure. And I am all too aware that my works are not yet the equal of those created by my stubborn teachers. Nor would I be able to debate the liter literary who critic art. But it's only a matter of time, I am still young and they are at least two years older than I. Surely I am no one is inferior in talent or vision. Surely I cannot still be inferior to those to these emblems of mediocrity, even after so much practice. And surely I am not like them who despise their skills, uh, I still cannot find a way to depict the light, shadow and lines that capture me. Time. Time is all I need and I shall produce a masterwork that will cause all their jaws to drop. Next, I must concentrate on honing my skills with a brush and begin my training in earnest. But first, I must collect enough funds, spending too much energy on earning a living on the road shall beggar my efforts, after all. I heard it said that you can encounter a wondrous fairy that can make wishes come true in the summer desert. Perhaps the fairy's help shall see me complete my goal in the shortest time possible. If luck is with me, I might even get more than that. I should get my things in order, I must go find a fairy. I must go to find the fairy as soon as possible. Hmm, these painters seem to have uh, undergone a change of heart. It's a true master. My egos <laughs> just took a hit. Uh, Vimo heard that the more confident you are, the worse it feels when you hit a serious setback. Vimo a little worried about his mental health, but uh, it's been a long time, so there's nothing you can do for him. I was concerned about what happened to him after that. Okay, nothing here. Yeah! Jumpy Dumpty, go! Taking a turn for the better. The deck juice. Coming through. Behold! Nothing else here? Huh. It did come all the way here. Oh, did it turn? So I could use water? Oh no! Did it turn to fire with me? You dare to gaze upon me? Coming through! A bitter pill to swallow. Yeah. Remember, health comes first. Sign here, please! Wind rises. Squall fury. Mind the side effects. <laughs> you even want this? Mm, it's complete. Alright, this should be the most critical step, let's keep it up. As long as we use the power of the streaming projectors, we can completely restore the mirror. I, I thought it was done, I have to mess with them now. Oh.
Uh, I don't know. It's just that here. Yeah, I don't have options. Huh. Voila, all done. Uh, seeing the water droplets so happy makes Spamo happy too. They're protecting the essence of friendship. We made water droplets wish come true. Now both the painter's friends and their work in the Valoria Mirage are looking their best. Maybe someday the painter will return to visit their friends and look at their masterpiece. Speaking of which, the style of this painting is pretty unique. Even though it's not that fancy, it's still beautiful. And what's more important is that Paimon can understand it. Perhaps if Paimon imitates this, this style, she can also paint lovely and understandable paintings. Sensational paintings aren't necessarily complicated. I don't know how to paint the way, Paimon. Yes. And if it's okay with you, let's take a picture of this painting. Then Paimon can study the painting whenever she likes. Maybe once Paimo has also painted something that pretty, it will attract lots of water droplets that want to be Paimo's friends. Unnecessary. Um, but am I keeping them? No. No, I placed them back already. Huh. The way back. That was cool. Mm -mm -mm. Just because Pamela said, perfect. I'm not saying it. Let's check if Pamela mentions it. It's sideways. It's broken. Hey man, it's broken. Not cool. It's broken. Too slow. At least I don't have to return there. Behold! Pull water! It's in the wing, pull water. Damage. Oh no, I need to check the other droplets. Huh? Come on, what's the order? Please help.
Yeah, I didn't really have to restart them. The first room was the first one. <laughs> this is the kind of surprise I could sing about. Uh... This had better be important. Take it and have fun. You even want this? Uh, no, where was? Oh, it was up there. Times I miss Kazha. Quit following me. Okay, I think I haven't come here. Hmm. There's a boat facing there. Maybe I did that. I did. Mm. There's the less area. There's still quite a bunch of things here. Uh, I think there will be another quest too for me to go. Ah, okay. That's that was the way back from here. Huh? 
to spawn in there. Did I? Can I do those challenges whenever I want? Uh, where am I actually? And there's another one there. Let me just see. I think there was something here I, that I got already. No. Okay, there was a box over there that I got already. And over here, that doesn't seem to be anything. Ah, that's the thing I was going to get. Take it and have fun. the side effects. Behold! Ha! Unnecessary. Uh, I didn't take the road. Yeah. Apparently over there there will be another uh, quest. Based on the last two, it will probably take a while, so I guess I won't be able to complete everything today. Let me just check the thing back here. Yeah, I completed a few of those. Maybe... This one's done already. Because I had to pass from here. Oh. Stop. Uh, 
Okay, maybe I can do this as many times as I want. Uh, how much go? Yeah, I think I'm gonna end here today and play it was more uh, over here. Mm, I guess Tuesday. This version ends. Yeah, I'll probably play before that and finish this. Alright, and I'm off.